morning, dear friends. It is nice to meet you again through this video. And as we meditate together God's word this morning, I pray that today your life will be great joy. And at the end of this day, you will have reason to rejoice in the Lord and be happy in Jesus. What I want to talk to you and meditate with you today is pleasing God and seeing God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3, we are told it is God's will that you should be holy. And then in verse 7, we are told, For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. And then Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And then again, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 says, Without holiness, we cannot see God. Now, how do we please God? That is the first thing I want to think with you. And then we will think about how can we see God? As we read in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith, it is impossible with God. So how do we please God? The answer is here. Faith. Now, what is faith? This biblical faith is much more than a mental and intellectual consent. In simple definition, faith is seeing by the eyes of faith something what your physical eyes cannot see. And then, not only by the eyes of faith you see, you become sure of what your eyes cannot see and yet by the eyes of faith you see. As Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, faith is the substance of things that, uh, the substance of things uh, that we have not seen or uh, evidence of things we have not yet seen. So, but really Jesus told us and taught us a beautiful lesson in the Gospel of, Gospel of Mark chapter 11, where Jesus cursed a fig tree. And seeing the fig tree is dried from its root, the disciples drew his attention to it. And then immediately he said, have faith. For if you have a faith, you can speak to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and be planted in the sea. It will happen. Therefore, believe when you pray that you have received what you have asked for, then you will have it. Now, here is a definition of faith. Jesus is teaching you and teaching me that when you pray, that's the time you must believe. And that believing is that you have received what you have asked for. And that means, though you do not see it in reality, and you cannot see it with the physical eyes, you begin to see it by the eyes of faith. And that is faith. Faith has an eye to see. And that is the eye with which we see many of God's wonderful blessings and promises happening to us. Though, in the same way, though you have not seen God with your physical eye, um, you don't doubt or question his existence and a reality. You begin to worship him. You begin to trust him. You begin to fear him. You begin to love him. 
you begin to and to serve him until you see him face to face one of these days and live with him eternally such faith leads you to obedience but one should not be satisfied by merely pleasing God. That means, as I have explained to you above, that faith is seeing by the eyes of faith what your physical eyes cannot see. God has given us so many promises. So when you exercise that kind of faith and begin to believe in the existence of God and believe in God in truth, that's when you begin to trust God, when you begin to love God, and then you begin to experience His peace and joy in your heart. And uh, your faith begins to increase, and then you begin to serve Him. And uh, you begin to want to please him in everything and do everything for his glory. All because by faith you have known that God is real. Because you experience in your own life things that otherwise you cannot experience. The peace, the joy of the Lord and the certainty of eternal life and the assurance of forgiveness of sin. Because you believe, though you have not seen, and God always is pleased with anyone who believed without seeing. That's what he told Thomas, who refused to believe unless he sees. He came and told him, Thomas, you now believe because you have seen. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And so how do you please God? You please God by having this faith. And that is why the author of the book of Hebrews says, without that faith, you cannot please God. So our churches are filled with, uh, with the people who have faith and thus please their God. But then, as I said, one should not be uh, satisfied by merely pleasing God. The next step or next level in your relationship with God and in your spiritual experience is seeing God. Now, how is that possible, seeing God? Um, in order to see God, the Bible says in... Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, without holiness, no one can see God. Holiness is the, is what opens your inner eyes to see God. See, Moses had one desire in his life. And let me encourage you and by saying this. You have faith, thank God, you are pleasing God. But you should not remain in that condition. You must have the desire to see God. That's what Moses had. You know, when people of Israel became stubborn and disobedient and they have committed sin and idolatry and adultery and all these sin. You know, Moses was so upset, and God was so angry, and he wanted to destroy them. But Moses was standing on the way, pleading on behalf of the people. He said, Moses, you get out of my way. I want to destroy them because they are stubborn people, stiff-necked people, disobeying, arrogant. And uh, after all, the, but Moses said, if you want to destroy them, you have to wipe my name out of your book. See, my friends, that is pastoral ministry. You are called to stand between God and the people. And your concern should be the life 
of a people among whom you serve. And uh, so God ultimately listened to Moses. He did not destroy them totally. And after all that, Moses came to God and said, God, if you found favor with me, I will have one request. Grant to me that request. And what is it? Show me your glory. And Moses said, uh, God said, that is an impossible thing you are asking because no one can see my face and live. But nevertheless, God granted Moses something that he has not given to anybody. I will pass by this way in front of you, but you have to stand in a particular place. In the mountain, there is a rock. There is a cleft, cleft in the rock. You get into that cleft of the rock and stand there. I will pass by. And when I am in front of you, I will cover your eyes, your face with my hand. And once I am, I pass by you, I will remove you, you will see my back. And Moses had that privilege of seeing the glory of God from behind, but not in front, not the face. Face, he cannot look and live again. See the desire of Moses. God was promised him, I will make you a great nation and I will give you, make your name great and all these promises. But Moses said, Lord, these are not my desire. I want to see you. How about you? You are pleasing God by your faith, but then that is not the level you should remain. You must see God and I must see God. And what is the answer? Without holiness. That is what we read in Thessalonians chapter 4. You know, holiness is something that was emphasized more than any other attribute of God, both in the Old Testament and New Testament. And uh, God's word tells us, in, without holiness it is impossible to see God. No one will see God. Holiness is the one attribute of God which is given greater emphasis both in the Old and the New Testament. In speaking to the people of Israel, God said, Be ye holy because I am holy. Why we should be holy? Because we are his children. He is our heavenly father. And the father wants his children to be like him, holy. First Thessalonians chapter th 4, 3 says, God's will is our holiness. Then verse 7, it says, God's call is to our holiness. And then verse 8 says, God's spirit by whom we are saved is a holy spirit. Then in verse 6 of the same chapter, we, I'm reading all these uh, passages from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. He says, God's judgment will fall upon all unholiness and uh, unholy people. See how important holiness is to God. See, the book of Hebrews says, without holiness it is impossible to see God. And the psalmist says, worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. And Jesus said, God is a spirit and they that worship God, worship in spirit and in truth. And then the psalmist says, worship God in the splendor of his holiness. So you put together, worship is worship in spirit and truth and in the splendor of holiness of God. I wonder if our worship display not only truth and spirit, but also the holiness of God as well. Those who are pleasing God by their faith, remember it is in worship 
that you begin to see God. And if that worship does not include worship in the splendor of his holiness, we miss something very, very important. Do you think more seriously about the holiness of God? Do you, my friends, consider that our God is holy and he cannot tolerate unholiness among his people and in his church? And therefore, I encourage all of you that these are the days when the preaching or teaching on holiness is very rare. But always remember, people may change, we may change, our situation may change, but God never changes. His standard never changes. He will not compromise his holiness. And his people need to be holy. And let me emphasize that when we come to worship our God, we should never forget we are worshiping a holy God. He looks for that holiness in his people, even in their worship. And that is the worship that is accepted in heaven because his throne is holy. He is holy and our God never changes. Remember, try to see God. And that means your worship. What is worship? Worship is not asking anything. Worship is not prayer. Worship is not just thanksgiving. Worship is seeing the face of God and his glory. Standing right in front of the glorious God. Beholding his glory. And you begin to see God. Prepare yourself for this. Amen. I pray in the name of Jesus that every unholy element in our character will be cleansed and washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. And you who have given us the Holy Spirit to live in us is the one who leads us further into being holy people of God. So help each one of us and help your people that they may please you and then they may see you and live with you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. This is your day. Have a wonderful day ahead of you today. At the end of this day, you will have the satisfaction of preparing the way to see God. Amen.